guys, Amber from The Vault here. Welcome back to another Fallout 4 video. Now guys, this one is a rebuild of, as you can see, Boston International Airport. And I promised you guys when I did the review of the smooth and clean for Boston Airport that I would go ahead and show you guys a rebuild of this area inside the actual remade building. So this you can see from out here, this is actually the remade Boston Airport building. This is an absolutely fantastic building to build in. I absolutely had a ball with it. I'll be honest though, um, it's fantastic to build in it because it feels good. Like it feels like a good survival location. Uh, it feels more like, okay, in the game, this is where I would actually want to survive. Like I would actually hunker my family down here kind of thing. But, uh, I'll tell you what, once you get inside, things change a little bit. It's kind of hard to build inside of an airport terminal. So I'm going to apologize up front for how shitty this build may actually be. So let's go ahead and start outside. So we're going to go ahead and go right behind the Boston International Airport sign. I'm actually going to run here for a second. So real quick now, I want to remind everyone that the whole point of this settlement for me personally is this is where I have all of my provisioners. I don't actually have any settlers who live here full time. So what I did is I went ahead and built the settlement as if it would have a few people living here all the time, more of a skeleton crew just to run the place. But overall, it's just a stopover for all of my provisioners so that we can hook up all of our supply lines. So if you kind of think about it that way, there's not going to be a lot of my normal elements in here. You're not going to see a lot of shops, that kind of stuff. Mostly you're just going to get things that you would need on a stop over site. So we have a ton, a ton of turrets out here. The reason why this feels like it's always been a good place to be attacked from for the settlement, it just feels like somebody would obviously come attack here, especially over here through the water, just kind of sneak up on you. So I decided to go ahead and put a bunch of turrets out here just to make it a little bit more realistic on what I would actually do. And then of course there's a guard over there. This is a small area that you have for doing fruits, vegetables, anything you need to plant. I just did corn because everyone likes corn. <laughs> Let's hope everyone likes corn. So here's actually one of my provisioners. This is another mod. Again, I talk about this all the time. Dogs, not Brahmin. This is the best thing ever. These are actually provisioners' dogs, so they don't carry those dumb Brahmin all over the place. All right, so we're going to go inside the actual building now. So this is the remade building. I added just a couple BOS flags out there. Yes, I am with the Minutemen, but I did uh, manage to save. I managed to save the three major factions. So I went ahead and saved both the Railroad and uh, the Brotherhood of Steel in my game because I did the Minutemen ending. So I do have uh, some Brotherhood-ish settlements. So we're going to go ahead and uh, work with this one, assuming that it would be a stopover. Yes, for my Minutemen, you saw my provisioners dressed as a Minutemen, but also for for the Brotherhood of Steel. So we're going to go ahead and head inside here. We're actually going to go inside this door first. So what I did is I added functional doors to the sides here. These are no snap doors through unlock settlement objects, USO. So immediately we have a desk here. I'm trying to make it kind of like a security checkpoint so anybody who comes inside has to go ahead and get checked in. You can see behind me there's a bunch of weapons. We have some ammunition as well as some Minutemen garb. So anybody who comes in, both doors are going to have that. They both have the kind of like that BOS check checkpoint. Again, I, I'm kind of mixing up Minutemen and BOS here just because those are two factions I still have in the game. And of course, Boston Airport being an actual uh, Brotherhood of Steel settlement and right next to the Pridwin and all that, I figured might as well go ahead and mix them up. So this is kind of my check-in station and you'll see right away this leads to bunks. Now, usually I try to do a lot of personalization with each of my bunk areas. I tend to make separate rooms. I tend to put in, you know, little artifacts that would make you kind of think of a person. With this one, I didn't do that. And the reason I didn't do it is because we're assuming that these are people who are just spending a night here. So they may not even be staying in the same bunk every night. And that was kind of the idea that I was going with when I built these. So you're going to see a lot of storage options. You're going to see a lot of, you know, crates under the beds. You're going to see things like that. Random art. None of it's going to feel personalized. There's a bunch of lockers. And the reason for that, again, is we're assuming that this is a stopover settlement. This isn't actually a settlement that many people live at. It's going inside here. Again, just kind of sticking with very, very small, minimal themes, throwing in some random walls. The whole goal, again, just to try to create something that's going to be a stopover for people on their way out into the wasteland. So this is all of our provisioners. Our provisioners are living in these. Low lighting in here because as I have kind of played the game more, I've thought, why do I always light up bedrooms so much? No one wants to sleep in the broad daylight. So I'm going ahead and uh, reducing kind of the lighting, making it a little bit softer when I go into buildings. But I'll go ahead and turn it on for you. So again, not a lot of personalization. Tried to stick to minimum personalization in here. Just kind of did some themes in the room, threw some little stuff together. Not a big deal. Trying really hard to make this kind of bland and not so much personalized because again, People are just going to be coming in and coming through here kind of more like a hotel. 
lots of storage space for anybody who's coming through. We want our provisioners to have plenty of places to store the things that they may or may not be bringing with them. Again, real light on decorations, trying to keep even the walls, trying to keep them real boring, real plain, just making sure that everybody has everything they may need, but nothing more than that. Here you can see kind of a common area. We have a nice sofa here, a couple magazines to read, some books. And we have our brotherhood statues here. Go ahead and go in. Now this is such an awkward place to build that you'll notice a lot of the walls don't make a lot of sense. They look like they're kind of just thrown in hodgepodge. They kind of are. I had a lot of trouble getting walls in here. So I kind of had to do what I could to make makeshift rooms. But realistically, I think in the end, it actually worked out pretty well. Um, I'm actually pretty pleased with how the, the walls kind of worked out and breaking into sections. Some rooms have one bed, some rooms have two. Uh, again, probably not the best settlement work I've ever done, but like I said when we were outside, this is a definitely an area where I realized very quickly this is a lot harder to build in than you think it's going to be because it's a big round area. Uh, you don't have a lot of round pieces inside of your building um, here in the game, so you kind of just got to do what you can do. So still sticking with that real minimal theme, just throwing random stuff. Everyone is going to have a Brotherhood of Steel flag, just again remembering that this is Boston Airport. Now these have no roofs on them, multiple reasons. One, these are not normal length pieces of wall. Like I said before, didn't have the option of using a normal length piece. Had to do the best I could kind of with the small area that I was given to build in and with the weird round corners. Oop, I didn't mean to talk to Mac. All right, so this is the last little bunk area. So again, just kind of having these real kind of plain blank spaces, you can think of them almost like a hotel. So running over here, you'll notice a lot of times in my settlements, I put individual restrooms in each of the apartments that I build. Uh, I did not do that here since, again, we're talking about people who are going to be checking in and out for a small period of time. So we do have a small bathroom here. You'll notice there's no uh, coverage on the back there. That's because in some places it matches up perfectly with the wall. But since the walls curve, we have a little bit of a mismatch here. So that's why there's no wall in the back there. It kind of worked out. Uh, it doesn't really bother me that much. Like I said, this is not my favorite um, in terms of places to build for a settlement to begin with Boston Airport, but this feels more realistic to me, like somewhere we would actually go ahead and hang out. So this is actually a scavenging station. It's the sweeping broom station. There's another one over here that's a clipboard. And then there's another one over here that is reading the newspaper. You can't see those because those are invisible rugs, but you can see McCready is actually interacting with one there. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to the arcade. Now this is just, I'm trying to build little areas, like I said, where people would come to visit. So these aren't people who are living here. They're just coming to visit this location. They're going to come see what it looks like. They're going to come check it out. So I do have a strobe, a couple strobe lights in here. And again, it's minimally kind of lit for a reason. I don't know how much uh, time you guys have spent inside arcades, but usually when I go into them, they're pretty darn dark. So I'm trying to kind of stick with that darker theme, uh, decorating the walls just a little bit. But again, Again, it's kind of being thrown in. The idea is that this is kind of just a stop over for different people who are trying to come and uh, continue on with their journeys after this. They're only going to be staying here for maybe a day or two at the most. It's kind of having places for them to relax. Let's actually go around the back here. We have a small storage area. So again, I'm really just trying to make things like it would be, okay, well, your provisioners, you're just storing random stuff. Um, you're not actually living here. This isn't a lived in settlement. Uh, I did go ahead and enclose this. Uh, it's not really a staircase. It's a staircase now, but it used to be an escalator. Um, I went ahead and enclosed this in so that I could put a couple different shops down, or not shops, excuse me, workbenches down here. You can see McCready has already found one. He's doing really good at uh, showing off everything that I've got here today. <laughs> so here we go. We have a couple workbenches in here. This is actually a chemistry bench. And then the workbench, of course, is in here. This is two-sided, so you can come out here on either side. And again, that's right under that staircase. Or, I guess, former escalator. Just a small sitting area, and the reason I actually put this in is because I wanted to show this to you guys. So I've talked a lot about Creation Club and how I'm not a fan of it, but I do, uh, because I've done a lot of... Uh 
I've done a lot of reviews on Creation Club, especially in the beginning. I did go ahead in the very beginning when it first came out and bought some some um, Creation Club coins or whatever the heck they're called. I can't remember. Credits. I think they're called credits. And I did end up getting all of this stuff. I did a couple different reviews on them. So I wanted to go ahead and place them in the game so you guys could kind of see what they look like. So just a random little sitting area. I might do a like fancy settlement where I actually try to build, you know, carpeted floors and all that and use this furniture specifically. I haven't decided where I'm going to do that yet, but I would like to do that. I've had a couple people show interest in actually seeing what maybe a um, pre-war settlement might look a little bit like if we tried to make it kind of like Covenant. So I did want to throw that in, just kind of show you. So McCready can show you there. That's how people would come and check in. Normally that's where we would have a guard stationed. Again, no one actually lives here though. Want to run up here real quick and just show you, this is actually part of the mod. I did not place any of this. I did not do any of this. I'm going to just turn off that pip boy light. So this is all actually in the mod. This is part of the clean and smooth mod. If you guys haven't seen that review yet, it was a real short video. Just wanted to show you guys kind of everything that you had options wise. So we're going to leave here and we're actually going to go down to the area that I think I, I probably had the most fun building and that's going to be like the cafeteria area. And uh, I'm going to be honest guys, I was listening to a podcast called Best Bad Movie and it was all about Battleship. <laughs> all I can think about when I look here is how horrible Battleship was. So <laughs> that makes me kind of excited. Uh, just a little inside baseball there and how I build things. I listen to a lot of podcasts while I build. So this is just a, a little cafeteria area. I wanted to do something because again, we're not assuming that these are individual people. They're not going to have individual apartments. They're going to come in. They're going to leave. It's it's very much a transient lifestyle. So we're just kind of putting in some random things, random places for them to hang out, for them to spend time with other people, to eat real quick, and then get back on the road, maybe take a sleep, that kind of stuff. So each one's a little bit different. Each plate is individual. I kind of do this typically with most of my settlements. And then there are a couple booths along the side here. I wanted to make sure I had enough seats for anybody who does or does not want to sit with another person. Then we have a small bar here. Now these two, or these first three, excuse me, pieces are actually from Workshop Decorations Pack. And the third one I placed myself. That's why it has the Institute Sneeze Guard instead of the uh, built-in Sneeze Guard. Greedy there is going to go ahead and enjoy some, uh, some, I don't know, dinner. I think it's late outside. <laughs> And this is actually the food shop, so this is a counter that has an invisible rug on the back, a shop rug, for a tier 3 store. So we could actually assign someone to that. And then here's the kitchen area. So again, we are assuming that these are people coming in and out. So we have just a few things that they would be able to use as they're coming in and out. Uh, different things that people might be able to make their own food, or maybe you order it from the shop and the shop makes it, that kind of stuff. That was kind of goal I was going for, to make something that would be usable for people as they were coming in and out. Again, kind of that hotel style. Not a ton of indoor plants here. I did do a couple just because I wanted to show how this could be used indoors as well as outdoors. I do like this idea. You can kind of have someone who's stationed up here but also stationed outside. And I kind of like that. I kind of like that as an idea. Uh, this is the Workshop Decorations Pack. Again, absolutely love this mod. This is one of my favorite mods. I Honestly, I really wish that there were more mods like Workshop Decorations Pack. Absolutely adored, especially for PS4 because it's so nice to be able to place these already kind of put together other shelves into your game. And that's it, guys. That is... Oh, and you actually see there's another rug up here. <laughs> Those rugs are all for scavenging mats. So that's it, guys. That is my rebuild of the Boston Airport clean and smooth version with the mod. I do want to do a different version. I'm going to have a separate one. Um, I'm not sure if it already went up or if it's going to go up after this. I'm not sure what order I'm posting these in quite yet. Uh, but definitely check that one out if it's already up or go ahead and check it out when it comes out. I think that you're going to see that they're going to be extremely different builds, but still the same concept. Again, trying to make something that's a little bit more like a hotel, something this a little bit more like maybe a stopover rather than being a permanent resident. So I had a lot of fun with this one though and I really enjoyed it. So I hope that you guys like this one too. So as always guys, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Not only does it mean the world to me guys, it helps other people find the videos and of course it is always a huge motivation to keep moving forward. Uh, the reason I'm still making Fallout videos guys is because you guys are still watching them. It really does mean a lot to me. Recently my game kind of collapsed. I wasn't able to play it for a really long time but you guys still like the videos so I went through and made the 
made it work. So I'm really excited to be back here, guys. So thank you so much. Uh, if you want to watch out more of my Fallout videos, pretty soon there'll be a picture of uh, my big dumb face on the screen there. Go ahead and click that to subscribe. Watch the Fallout playlist that'll be posting up or the video that YouTube thinks you'd like based on your browsing history. I'm going to get out of here, guys. I hope you uh, join me for some more of these kind of walkthroughs and some more of these settlement builds, and I'll see you in the next one.